Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to look at multiplying fractions. And there's two things we need to take care of. First of all, when we have fractions, that means there are numerators and denominators. And the rule is when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together and we multiply the denominators together. Secondly, if there are signs involved, like negative signs, we have to take care of the negative signs as well. Notice that when you write a fraction, you could put the negative sign in front of the fraction like this, or you could put the negative sign in front of the numerator, or you can put the negative sign in front of the denominator, and all three are exactly the same. They have the exact same meaning. There's no difference whatsoever. So it really doesn't matter where you put the negative sign. In addition, sometimes you can simplify the fraction before you multiply. For example, let's see here. Here we can see here that we have a 2 in the numerator here, and we have a 4 in the denominator there. You can see that this can be divided by 2, and this can be divided by 2. You can simplify the fractions before you actually do the multiplication. One more thing, sometimes we have a negative sign in front of the parentheses like this, and we wonder, what do we need to do with that? Well, for one thing, you can take the negative sign and place it inside the parentheses, or you can think of this as being a negative 1. This can then be written as a negative 1 multiplied times 3 over 4, and multiply times 5 over 7. In other words, here we multiply these together, there's one negative sign, which means the answer will be negative. Again, the rule is, an odd number of negative signs, the answer will be negative. An even number of negative signs, when we multiply, the answer will be positive. This then becomes 3 times 5, which is 15, divided by 4 times 7, which is 28, and we have the negative sign here, we can place it anywhere in front of the 15, in front of the line, or in front of the 28. It doesn't make any difference. The next one, here we have, first we're going to ignore the negative signs, this is 1 times 1, and 2 times 3 in the denominator gives a 1 sixth, and there's two negative signs, therefore the answer will be positive. Here again we're going to ignore the negative signs, 2 times 3 which is 6, 5 times 7 which is 35, and uh, two negative signs, a negative times a negative gives us a positive, that is therefore the correct answer. Over here, again, this can be thought of as a negative 1, a negative 1 times a negative 1 here, the two negatives cancel, this then becomes a times c in the numerator divided by b times d in the denominator. Here notice that we can simplify, we can divide the numerator here by 2, divide the denominator by 2, that, that becomes 2, and now we can go ahead and multiply. There's one negative sign, so we get a negative sign here. 5 times 1 gives me 5, 2 times 11 is 22, that's minus 5 over 22. And here again, you can see that we can simplify it first. We have an x here in the numerator, we have an x in the denominator. This cancels out, this becomes a 1, this becomes minus 3. Here also we have a y over here, and we have a y here that becomes 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, we have one negative sign, we can put a negative sign there, this becomes 2 thirds. And that's how we multiply fractions, again, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators, we multiply the denominators, and then we count the number of negative signs we have, when there are odd number of negative signs, the answer is negative, when there's an even number of negative signs, the answer is positive, and that's how it's done.